Let's play Monster Loves You. Last time, we went through Adolescence, which is a very strange time. So, so uh, many strange things, yes. But this time, we'll see what happens next. I have not a clue. Well, I mean, I'm assuming adulthood, but yeah. Or a black screen of endless nothingness. I think I broke it. There we go. <sighs> so it froze. <laughs> So that's the main menu button. Good to know. Adolescence is fleeting. You have grown beyond youth and have become an adult. You've been dragged from your bed by your friends of na neighbors. I'd honestly be more likely to do a bit of both. Confused fighting. Lick the thing. They tell you it's time to grow up, you're dragged into the woods. Neighbors throw you into the center of a great circle of monsters, all older than you. They whisper to each other, then look at you, and whisper some more. Monsters murmur and sputter, spit and snarl, though they're deciding on what best defines you as a monster. There's no way I'd be able to nap at this point. I'm busy listening to them. After a while, the muttering stops, though the murmuring goes on for some time longer. Finally, the assembled monsters come to a decision. Well, what is it? The ring of monsters shuffles closer to you, forming a tighter circle. Elders loom over you while smaller adults crouch low. The taller adults be crouching and the smaller adults be, like, stretching up. Anyway, your surroundings grow shadowy and dark. What's happening? This is the end of your adolescence. Your body becomes tougher, and other grown-up monsters will be more likely to listen when you speak. <sighs> you know, people say that, but, you know, when you become an adult, the other adults are no, no, no more likely to listen to you, depending on which generation they're from. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> The ring of monsters shuffles closer to you, forming a tighter circle. Elders loom over you. Didn't we just say this? What, like me? The other monsters hold you, in some respect, five out of a hundred. <laughs> That's some respect indeed. It's, it's like five percent isn't exactly high regard, but okay, good for them. It is immediately clear to the crowd you are a very kind for a monster. <laughs> Indeed. The crowd shoves two monsterlings into the circle, each with a broken arm. An elder asks you to take first, uh, take care of them, apply general first aid, or gently tend to their wounds. Yes, you croon and pet the monsterlings until they grow drowsy, then split their damaged limbs in silence. They leave quietly, feeling much better. Everyone cheers, accept their respect, and move forward. 75, 75, 75. And 10% respect. We doubled it! You're an adult now. You'll grow stronger over time. Your personality is no longer as mutable as it was when you were young. Yeah, I'm not going to get into a psychological discussion on the development of personality, but onward to adulthood! Politic or explore? killed monsters, something rare in the animal game. He stares at you. Consider the bear. The bear is so potent that it deserves capital letters when being referred to. Apparently so does the word being and referred to. He shines from within, radiating a light visible to the eye, but plain to the heart. Not cordially, at least. The bear doesn't move, you go back the way you came. It was an interesting day. 
Sword in the stump. We have to do this. You find a red hood in a basket in the middle of the forest path. A human house is nearby. Funny you never noticed it before. Here's a white picket fence out here. Circle the house. There's a great deal of blood in the yard along with a half-dead wolf coughing weakly. Ask the wolf what happened. Woodcutter's friend, you can't trust them. Beware their axe, even worse than knives. The wolf finishes by. Technically, the the thing that makes an axe deal more damage is the weight behind it and the fact it's gonna penetrate. From the weight, I mean a knife can still penetrate. Now oh, you're heading for spell. Hmm. You're not sure if you're if you're respecting the human capacity for killing or the wolf's perfectly timed last words, but before you can come to a decision, you've grown bored. Be on your way. You all come with a spring in your step and a whistle in your mouth. Uh, let's see. I'm concerned and curious by that. Stalked the forest, hunting an elusive swift elk. Suddenly it emerges from the underbrush, lowering its antlers and falling at the ground. It's going to charge! <laughs> you flee from the ungulate. That was... Uh, I guess that was a risk. Let's see what's on the point. Digging and humans. Yeah, we know we're flicking. What's worse? You hear grit, grit men telling younger monsters about the human that almost killed him. It's the pointy parts that get you. Humans have no inbuilt pointy parts. They carry pointy parts with them. Fingernails aren't exactly pointy, they're more raking. But anyway, listen in. Always wait until the knife is pointing somewhere else, then run away, he turns to you and says, Isn't that right? That's just a lie. That's no. Uh, let's, let's go with the knife. Calmly expand on Griffin's tale, sharing what you've learned about frightening blades of humans. The other monsters promise they will treat with such things with respect, even if nobody's holding one. Wow, 93 out of 100. <laughs> Less mutable personality, my tail. Dig a hole. Look over your garden. Garden? Garden! Most hobbles have gardens. Many monsters don't care, but some like to show off their herbs, spices, and flowers. How's it looking? There are so many rocks here, even if you don't feel like planting things. It looks bad. These rocks ought to go. Start digging! Well, this work is a lot harder than you expected. You're not a natural digger like Molefoot or Shovel Shovel. <laughs> shovel Shovel? Not all monsters pick good names, just be glad you're not one of them. <laughs> dig, 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 yeah, but he's a fox, alright. Dig, 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 It's hard, but you eventually get better at it. You dig some more? When you're done, the garden looks much better. Oh, that digging turned over the earth, too. That's probably a good thing. Spine doctor. <laughs> I'm afraid of that name. He's going to doctor your spines. Doctor, after a scroll, stops to compliment your work ethic. You're not sure what an ethic is, but she always talks like that. Finger pointing? Yeah, that belongs in the politic box, doesn't it? Rock. Ripping. Snake. Moon is rising in the sky. It's time to gather snakes for the ritual. Sometimes the full moon has monsters, shadows on it, that's gotta mean something. Monsters celebrate the shadows with snake soup. Okay, go out to gather snakes. Wander the fields near the uh, whale mist. It's easy to catch snakes, but every time you reach for another one, someone will squirm out of your grasp. Most of your snakes are getting away. Keep catching them. Honesty maxed. Cleverness. Everyone claps when you arrive with three living snakes hanging from you by their fangs. <laughs> the venom hardly stings at all. The snakes are added to the cauldron along with the mass of other snakes, some writhing and others lying still. Oh, I don't like the thing. One reason I don't eat frustration. I mean, not going into a big ethical debate on it, I just not. 
not fond of the idea. Other people do as their business. Join the circle as the ritual begins. Honesty is 100. Not sure how soup counts as politic, but damn. Yeah. Right, let's wander back over here to the It's by a wolf pacing outside a small wooden cabin. From within the building, you hear the bleeding of goat kids. Watch. Ah, uh, he's trying to get in, but the goat kids are going to They work with the goat. The most, well, clear option, also. The wolf accepts an offer of existence. I'm glad you're reasonable. Some monsters would just attack me. It's the wolf's lucky day, dude. The wolf snarls. How should we finish this hunt? I can block them while you climb. Got any better ideas? Eh, I'll go with that. The wolf paces from door to window, window to door, while you climb the roof of the cabin. Okay, if I click let them go now, I don't know what's going to happen. At this point, I'd be lying, because I said I would have died, so... It wasn't a weak spot before, but there surely is one now! You smash and claw your way into the cabin, where the goat kids are helpless before your strength. <laughs> you and the wolf share a delicious meal, ensuring a continuing improvement in monster-wolf relations. That's it. Eleven. <laughs> I find that amusing. Snake! You take the lead on a hunt in the whale nest, but you become separated from the group. Suddenly you catch sight of something. There! Where? There, where, where, near, near, fair. Blair, blair, blair. Within the thicket, rumor has it an especially large, clever snake trick, Nash Nash, biting her. Made her sick for days, and it's right there, waiting, watching. Can we talk to the snake? Call everyone. What do you mean everyone? Well, it's best that the snake remains there lurking. It's its territory. Eroding my bravery rather, del like, horribly, though. There is such a thing as just not messing with the creature whose territory that is. It's the snake's territory. Keep it cool. Explore the whale mist. You notice the air smells faintly of gingerbread. There, ahead, there's a flock of very fat birds pecking a trail of crumbs that hide in the trees. Try the crumbs. Follow the trail. It leads along twisting paths you never knew existed. Deep in the forest, you come across a rickety human house which smells of baked goods. You hear human speech. Two children are babbling nearby. Human children look tired and thin, but their bellies bulge as though they've just eaten a huge meal. They're so weak that you don't fear for your life for being so close. Wait for them to leave. Smoke get, begins to pour from the windows of the house. The children flee deeper into the forest laughing. As flames rise to engulf the whole, whole house, you hear an adult human screaming inside. Shouldn't we have stayed and helped? Okay. That's some of the decision making, isn't it? The elder monster and they walk slowly in the direction of the room. She passes down the road, some of the elder elders nod to her. They then go to her hovel and start smashing things. Reed Blitz stops tearing apart Alicia's dining room table and says she feels herself beginning to dissolve. She's going to release herself and become one with the slime and the spawning bag. What happens? Monsters that get to certain age either settle into their personality and shake forever, or they let themselves become one with the slime from which they came. Their personality can have an effect on future generations of monster lines. Run and thank her for her contribution, I suppose. 
going to be remembered, Leia, and we'll see a bit of you in every monstling from now on. Leia wiped a slimy tear from one of her smaller eyes and sniffs. She hugs, she squishes, her body is already starting to break down at Bazaar. She breaks away, smiles one last time, and walks quickly towards the brood cave. We'll never see her again. 96. Jeez. I'm just maxing things out. Accident. Curious face, I have to click the curious behind the lights hitting a dent of alarm clock. Why well, have bells that don't ring? Is this some kind of riddle? Before he can answer, he throws the clock over his shoulder and glowers at it. Try to fix it. We pick up the clock and examine it with care. It's so complicated, more complicated than anything a monster has ever made. That includes monster lengths. Wheels and cogs and gears and levers. Okay. Even though it's so complicated you might get your claws caught inside or get a spring in the eye or accidentally hurt blots or hurt blots on purpose for that matter. Curiosity. You turn the key around, it makes a clicking sound, and the bells go ding. Not bad, it's getting harder to turn, though. You don't want to keep turning, you'll break the main spring. Stop while you're the clock ticks and talks, talks and ticks, and you're pretty sure it's actually keeping time. If only you know what the little arms and hands are about. In any case, Blotz goes around showing everyone how you fixed his artifact. It's just basically the wind-up clocks for anybody that doesn't know. They have one. They have a large mainspring inside, which is a piece of usually spring steel, I think, wound up, which is where the key goes in. You tighten it, and the tension from that spring trying to unwind itself is what drives the watch forward. Most winding pocket watches and the like use that. If you wind it too far, you can damage or break the mainspring, which, well then, it don't work no more. I don't know who this is. I'm assuming that's us. I don't know. In fact, it doesn't speak too well, I wonder. Like, clearly the character you're playing as can speak. Or logic. Or maybe that's their language. Who knows? Four days left. Four things there. Five things there. Do we want to click the one? All of Omen is a buzz. Elders glare angrily at everyone, then look back at the broken sign in the town gate. You look back down at the little piece of the sign you're holding and blush. Wait, what did you do again? Coming back from a hunt, you were so full of high spirits, you jumped up and slapped the sign. You slapped just a little too hard, with your claws. All of Omen is okay. Please? This tree spots the bit of sign that you're holding. Hey, don't tell anyone you broke it. It'll get fixed. This wall will blow over. It's just an ill wind that blows nobody any good. Bygones be bygones. What's she going on about? This tree is often accused of thinking she knows everything. This includes human cliches. All of them. This tree says I can take care of it. Look, I took a bit of the sign too. I can slip some into Virak's hair when he isn't looking. Nobody ever believes him, and since he always lying and stealing things. I ain't accusing the poor guy. It'll make even worse for her. All the gathered elders scowl. Nick turns chewing you out, which for monsters is a more literal expression than you might expect. Ragged and bloody, you creep back to your hovel to heal. Take solace in the fact that your honor is intact. You messed up, but you told the truth, and everyone will remember that. Although honesty was already maxed out, so eh. Um, <laughs> so goat, 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 squirrel hops into a pool of sunlight, bright eyed and bushy tailed. What the heck? He dropped from a branch, grabbed it, and twist its head off. <laughs> a young wolf suddenly leaps in front of you, snaps the squirrel out of your claws, and runs off, laughing and barking. Wolf's gonna bark now? Must be multilingual. Unless <laughs> it looks like it's fast. There's the wolf. You run into the underbrush, slashing. Soon lose. Oh, for heaven's sake. Go home and try to think about it. Woohoo! Jeez, I'm, I'm making things work.
Mars. As you approach your hovel, blissfully, helpfully points out that you've stepped in some of the wolf poop. <sighs> well, it was nice while it lasted, being clever. Let's click this one. Alfrog are arguing over a cat. They both want to eat the cat. That's horrible. Stop eating cats. You are not Alf. Alfrog says he caught the cat, but then he says it was his larder before it got out. Both turn to you, you're a neutral party, so you decide. Technically, in this case, it would be for both. Holds the cat close, stroking it out. Put a cat in you and rubs its head against the shyness. Can I demand to keep the cat and then. Ask Ballfrog if sharing is on the table. You're able to persuade him to give Griffin the cat's tail, so it's something they thank you for your intercession. Well, we at least got back to 99 out of Got back to 40%, at least. Let's see. Show your newest collection of human artifacts to your neighbors. They seem suitably impressed and listen in. The truth is, you just found them in the woods, but everyone seems so interested, it would be a shame to let them down. Monsters do live a story, so you could stretch the truth. Tell the truth. By the time you're halfway done with the tale of your peaceful walk back to Omen with the artifacts, Hamrag is asleep and everyone else has gone home. <laughs> eh, that was a, a day, I suppose. But we are at zero day. Like we know where this is leading. But we will find out next time. So see you next time.